Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a great day. Right, today's video we are going to finish off the videos that we started last week. So last week we decided to look at um, the tech stocks that are undervalued at the moment and see if there is if there are any companies out there that we could potentially add to our portfolios or if we already own them we might actually add to add to them now the two videos that we've done last week is this one here so five cheap high growth stocks and then part one and part two today we're going to do part three just to finish off the reason I wanted to do this is because there's so much vol volatility in the markets right now and a lot of the you know the tech companies have basically been hit the hardest in the last few months so I wanted to look at that and see if there's any companies that we could potentially add to our portfolios or maybe just put in your watch list and see how they go from now on especially this week coming okay especially next week so next week a lot of companies will be reporting their earnings so monday and what basically what happens when companies are reporting their earnings especially what's happened just last week is going to create a lot of volatility in the market some companies will miss earnings and things like that some companies will actually you know exceed their basically their expectations and it still go down and this is one of the things that i've noticed in the last year and a half no matter how amazing the earnings reports are, majority of these companies go down. Even Tesla, the day it reported some amazing um, earnings report, right? It was up almost 8%. By the end of that day, I think it was up 2 3% or whatever it was. So it's happening and it's happening a lot. So we just need to be mindful of this kind of thing happening. So next week, some of the companies that I own in my portfolio are actually reporting. Companies like 3M, for example, Visa is reporting, Microsoft, Alphabet. And this is what is going to happen, right? Alphabet and Microsoft, um, Visa, um, Apple and Amazon, between those three, four, five companies, when they report, even including MasterCard there, they are the top 10 of the S&P 500. So if they go down the whole, basically S&P 500 goes down with them because they are almost to 20 something percent of the index. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why when, if these companies go down, everything else is going to go down. If these companies go up, everything else is going to have a positive earnings. Okay? Somehow, a positive day. Okay. Earnings might not be great, but they will be all right because these companies are doing well. So anyway, that's just generally just talking about the earnings report next week. So if you if you have a couple of these companies on your watch list, maybe just keep an eye on the news next week. So Monday to Friday, there's so many different companies reporting. So keep an eye on that if that's what you're interested. Right. The other thing I want to talk about is interest rates. Now, some of the stocks that we've talked about in, the, in those videos, okay, here, were high growth stocks. For example, CrowdStrike. And one thing I want you to remember about this is, okay, if you go to Yahoo Finance, you go to CrowdStrike Financial section, what you will notice is, okay, if we go to income statement, so that's basically income they generated from their sales, they have a positive, obviously, revenue, and then they have cost of the revenue, and their gross profit is actually positive. But then what happens is, based on the research development they've taken, all the taxes they have to pay, their net income which is very important okay so this is what when analysts talk about top line bottom line they're talking about top line being the revenue total revenue and net income is basically the money the take home money basically okay and that has been negative for this company so what do they do then because they don't have any cash lying around they go to the bank borrow some money okay and when the interest low interest rates were very very low or almost zero they can just borrow this money for free. That was it. And what do they do with that money? They reinvest in the business so they can actually grow the top line and hopefully in the long run, create more profit, um, gross profit. Then once they've paid off all their taxes and overheads, have at least a positive net income, which will lead to okay, having a positive EPS, earnings per share. Now, that's not happening for this company right now. And this is the type of company that will suffer when the interest rates go up. Why? Because they have to finance the debt. So if they get debt from the banks, the banks will not just lend them debt. So when you look at their long-term debt, 
okay, that they're getting, they will have to pay whatever the interest rates are. So if the interest rate was zero, okay, and now it's almost a four or five percent, whatever, okay, I'm not saying that's what it is, I'm not sure what it is right now, but in the US anyway, if that's what it is, then they now pay in four percent of the debt that they actually have in their balance sheet, which then means they get into more and more debt and the net income re gets reduced. And for that reason, it's not a good investment for us. So the companies that we're looking at today are all of them will have a balance sheet. Okay, so the, some of the companies that we looked at in here didn't, but the ones that we're looking at today all have a negative, um, positive net income and positive cash flows as well. And that is really important. We talked about yesterday how important the cash flow is to people like Kevin O'Leary. He always talks about cash flow and positive cash flow here. And what, why does he talk about that? Because he knows the companies will pay you dividend. They will invest in the business and they're not going to get into debt. So the less debt in the balance sheet, the better for investors. Right, so let's have a look at the companies. We've got six different companies here. And the first one is ASML Holdings. This is one of the companies. Um, they basically are in Netherlands. They do um, all this equipment. Okay, This is the type of equipment that all the um, chip makers in use. So Intel, so their clients include Intel, includes AMD, and includes and TSM, okay? All of these companies need one of these things in order to be able to produce those chips. And without this company, the world will be a different place right now. I'll be honest with you, genuinely, because no other company out there create, basically produces these equipments. And they cost about in the millions. Just one, this, it looks like a room there. I don't know what, it looks like when you go to the gym and stuff, it doesn't it look like, at first when I saw this, I thought it was inside a gym. Okay, so that when you go to the gym, is you know, one of those lockers. Okay, it looks like a locker room, the whole thing. But it's actually cost us quite a, a lot of money. So this is one of the first company that we're going to look at. If you're interested, look at the balance sheet. I'm definitely interested in this business. I'm going to look into it in the next few weeks. Um, I think they reported their earnings last week, so I'm going to look into that first, and then I'll, you might see this in my portfolio, because I do like the tech companies, but at the moment, although I've said I'm going to reduce the tech companies in my portfolio because I have keep investing in them rather than, you know, the, the rest of the stocks out there. Anyway, let's carry on. Um, in terms of current share price is $607 per share. P is 43, quite high in my opinion. Price to free cash flow only 22. So that is a good sign. EPS of almost $14, market cap of $245 billion. They have a white mode and they have capital allocation was exemplary. That means they allocate in that money, they generate in good revenues, they invest in that money back into the business. They're doing a lot of good things basically with that money that they get receiving. The five year growth rate, so they do pay some dividends, so it's 0.55%, five year growth rate of 36%, dividend growth streak of 13 years, payout ratio only 43, and the dividend safety is actually 82%, which is very high. They have all basically $10 billion. Right, if we go back to CrowdStrike and go to cash flow here, you will see they've got in the millions. This company, they're looking at in the billions right now. So that's the difference between these two companies. A company that has a product, again, CrowdStrike is a great company, but it's growing. And that is basically the, in this kind of volatile markets, you're better off investing in this kind of business than actually a company like CrowdStrike unless your time horizon is you know, 30, 40 years from now and you don't have to worry about that either. Beta is quite low, current ratio is above one, which is very good. Profit margin of above 31%, return on equity almost 50%. Neck in terms of growth wise, okay, revenue growth of 17%, which is very good. And then you've got earnings growth of quarterly earnings growth rate of um, 31%. Then you've got, and when it comes to the growth um, estimate for the next five years in terms of earnings, it's almost 30%, which is very, very high. Okay. One of the things that you've noticed this, um, um, in fact, I'll talk, about, I'll talk about that in a second. Simply evaluate, um, Wall Street says is 4%, 5% overvalued at the moment. This actually should be a red because that's overvalued at the moment. Okay. Fair value should be $492. Morningstar says it's actually in discount, should be $800. So it's slightly different there. 
Tip rank says it's 28% upside at the moment and its price should be $786. I will say it's a moderate buy. If you're interested, you might just, just start buying a little bit here and then dollar cost average into this business. Now, one of the reasons I've included this company is not only because of the balance sheet, but they are actually down quite a bit. So when you look at their a year to date, they are down 24%, almost 24% down from where it was. Okay, It was almost $800 per share and right now about $600. And that is one of the reasons I thought, you know what, let me include in this company in this thing. Right, the next company we're looking at is Lamb Research. Again, is one of the businesses that are operating in the semiconductor. We've talked about this quite a lot. Currently trading $463 per share, PE only 15, really. Price to free cash flow of 16.74. Again, EPS of 32 almost and market cap of $65 billion. I can't believe how low that is. That's actually quite low. Again, they have a white mode and exemplary and dividend yield of 1.28%. Five-year growth rates of 34%, which is very, very high. And then dividend growth streak of seven years, pay out only 17%. And when you look at dividend safety, 66% safe. And they have $4 billion in the bank to pay you that dividend and so on. Beta is quite high, um, quite volatile company. Basically, what the reason I like to include this is lower beta is always good for you because when the market is basically going down, you actually your portfolio, if it's below one, is actually will hold nicely. But when you also miss out when there's a bull market and everything is going up 20, 30%, you're not going to basically have that. So you have to find that balance, I guess. Current ratio of 3%, sorry, 3 above 3, which is quite good. Profit margin of twenty, almost 28%. Return on equity, 77%. Quarterly revenue growth year on year of 22% and then 37.5% in terms of earnings growth. And the next year, next five years, basically, they're, they're expecting the analysts expect about 14% um, earnings growth. Right now, according to Simply Wall Street, it's 42% undervalued. According to Morningstar, it's 35% undervalued. And according to tip ranks is 38% undervalued. So all of them agree that is undervalued. I really like this company. If I didn't have KLA in my portfolio, I would definitely have included this company in this in my portfolio. Because some of their clients include Samsung, Micron, Intel, okay, Taiwan Semiconductors, um, manufacturing company. All of those companies are the basically the foundry companies that actually create their own chips or whatever for other companies. And they have the same thing, basically, these two companies, between the two of them, they actually work with everybody in the chip um, world. The next company we're looking at is Accenture. Accenture is basically one of those businesses that work with um, directly other businesses to help them transform their normal businesses into technologies in terms of media and communications, financials and all of that stuff. They do a lot of the, the data analysis kind of things. Right now, they're trading $310 per share. In fact, what I'm going to show you very quickly before we move on is LAMB research and how much is done. Year to date is actually down 36%. 36% a year down, a year to date. I was at some point, it was $725 per share. That is crazy. <laughs> that is genuinely, that's how much these stocks have gone down. You really have to be careful out there. And when I see this kind of thing, I'm like, whoa, imagine. And why am I surprised to, to be honest, look at Dolby, right? Since I bought it, it's 16% down. I'm 400 pounds down right now. Right, anyway, let's carry on. P about 31, um, price to free cash flow 28, slightly lower, EPS almost $10, market cap of $200 billion almost, and then both have economic work mode and a capital allocation, which are both absolutely brilliant, dividend yield of 1.24%, which is actually quite good, five-year growth rate of 9%, dividend growth streak 16 years, and 38% payout ratio, 92% dividend safety, and they have a free cash flow of almost $7 billion. Beta is quite high. Current ratio is perfectly where we want it. Um, profit margin is really good. We're looking for about 15, but that's not bad at all. Return on equity above 32%, um, all 32%. Um, quarterly revenue growth of 24%. Earnings growth of 13.5%. Uh, 
and 12.8% and growth in the next five years, which is really good. Undervalued according to Simply Wall Street, overvalued according to Morningstar. Tip rank says is over undervalued at the moment. I will say it's a moderate buy or hold if you have this company already in your portfolio. The next one we're looking at is ServiceNow. Again, another company that does you know software as a service mod model business that works with other companies, customer service kind of thing. Currently trading four hundred and seventy one dollars per share. PE is very high. Price to free cash flow is very high. EPS quite low. The market cap is only about you know ninety three billion dollars. Again, when it comes to economic mode and capital allocation, it's both absolutely brilliant. Free cash flow, they have $1.8 billion in the bank. Beta is not that bad. Current ratio, just above one. Profit margin is quite low. Return on equity is quite low. Again, the growth has been absolutely fantastic. And the next five years, this is the reason I've included this, is 26% expected 20 to grow basically the earnings 26%. So when that happens, the profit margins will, will basically um, increase and definitely return on equity will increase as well. Simply Wall Street says it overvalued just about f above 3% um, and the money starts to say basically and both tip rank have said is actually quite undervalued at the moment. Okay, Remember these two are using intrinsic values. This one is looking at 12 months price target of basically um, 43%, which is not bad. The next company okay, that we're looking at is Autodesk. Autodesk is basically one of the company, probably one of the oldest companies. It was founded in 1982 in this list. Okay? And they work, they have a lot of types of software that are for architect, engineering, that kind of thing, constructions and so on. So they have loads of loads of companies in the, under their umbrella. And currently trading $187 per share. P is 83. Price to free cash flow of 33, which is not bad. So that means they've got maybe enough cash in the bank. Um, EPS 2.24, um, and then market cap of only $40 billion. They both they have a white mode and um, capital allocation exemplary. Um, free cash flow is $1.46 billion. Beta is quite high. Current ratio is low. So that means they might not be able to finance their current basically uh, liabilities so next 12 months they might struggle to pay this okay profit margin is quite low return on equity is quite good and then quarterly re um, earnings uh, revenue growth okay 16 percent but earnings have not been great last quarter but this is one of the reasons i've included next five years this company is expected to grow about 26.7 percent which is very very high simply um, wall street says 40 percent undervalued Monista 15% and Tip Rank says about 48%. So again, really good company. It's been around for a very long time, um, but the growth of the basically the expect uh, what the analysts are expecting is actually quite high. Now, one of the dangers of this is, right? So the analysts will say next five years is going to grow about 26.7%. Imagine if what happened to Netflix happens to this company. And they don't grow as much as they ex the analysts expect. What happens? They lose a lot of market share. So be careful. Um, the net final company is probably one of the best companies out there. I wish Trading212 allowed me to buy this in my ISA account. I don't want to buy it in free trade. Um, I've now sold it, moved on because I don't want to be pay paying a lot of taxes and all that stuff on my dividends and so on. So I wish they did. And if they have, then I would. In fact, I might start looking at other companies out there that I can actually open. Maybe next year I might move my ISA to another company um, and start a fresh one maybe somewhere. Um, because I really, really genuinely like this company. Um, right, let's have a look at the price. Um, $95 per share. It's gone down quite a bit since I actually sold it. It's actually down quite a bit. Wow, I'm actually surprised. Thir 25%. 25%. By the way, um, Autodesk is actually down 33%. Um, ServiceNow is actually down 25%. And Accenture is down about 23%. So all of these companies have actually have one thing in common, two things in common. They're actually down a lot and they are high growth businesses. Okay, right, let's carry on. Um, PE about 22, price to free cash flow of 46. EPS 4.34, um, market cap of $496 billion. One, probably one of the biggest semiconductor companies out there. A brilliant company in terms of capital allocation. It has a wide mode. 
um, annual dividend yield of 1.63, 15 year percent or five year growth rate. They haven't actually been increasing that dividend consistently. Payout ratio only 44 percent, dividend safety 62 percent, and they have nine billion dollars in the bank. Now, beta is not that bad. Okay, cut ratio just an above one, which is really good. Profit margin. So this is when the company comes alive. The profit margin is 37.6 percent. Return on equity almost 30 percent. Revenue growth last um, year and year quarterly revenue growth is 21 percent, 16 percent in terms of earnings growth, and the next five years is expected to want to grow 20 percent. Now. Every single company out there, including Intel's and AMD's and whatever NVIDIA's, they design their own chips, especially the other AMD and uh, NVIDIA, and including now micro, um, Apple. They design their own chips and then they send it to Taiwan Semiconductor and they then cre basically create it. They literally um, they manufacture it. That's it. So simply Wall Street says 40% discounted. Morningstar says 44% uh, discounted. Um, and according to tip rank is actually 25% discounted. I will say it's definitely strong buy. Uh, if it was on, available on thingy, um, trading 212, I would definitely be buying today, but it's not available through here. It's only available on the invest section, and I don't like using that because they do loan out your stocks. Right, so that's six different companies that are really high growth stocks but they have a couple of things in common. They are, have high growth, they have a lot of free cash flow, and majority of them, in fact, all of them do pay some sort of a dividend, which is quite good. Okay, and now, however small, they actually are paying some dividend. Um, in fact, this one doesn't pay any dividend um, service now. Uh, but yeah, so great companies, and in terms of the long-term investment, I mean, you can literally buy ASML and completely forget about it, and don't worry about it because I know for the next 10 years we will need the product that this company actually creates because every single company out there, chip makers, actually need their equipment. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you're enjoying this kind of content, please, all I ask is just to give the videos a like. I hope you enjoyed the video. Assalamu alaikum. Take care.